Welcome back to North Wilkesboro Speedway in North Carolina, where the cars are beginning to roll out of the pit area now in preparation for this 150 lapper. Larry and I have moved into a relatively warm broadcast booth, and joining us here is uh, Dick Berggren, the editor of Stock Car Racing Magazine, who uh, used to drive modifieds, now drives mostly super modifieds, but certainly has some experience in this type of racing. And Dick, uh, the track they're racing on today is ideally suited for this type of racing. It really is, Bob. In fact, if you could get a racing architect to draw a speedway that would be perfect for modified stock cars, he'd come up with something that's very, very close to this. The racetrack is perfectly wide in terms of the ability of these cars and drivers to pass each other. We should see some good side-by-side -side racing today. This is, in addition, about the fastest racetrack that the majority of these competitors will see all year. This is their super speedway. It took 123 and a half miles an hour to make the pole today. That's six and a half miles an hour faster than the Winston Cup cars. And the drivers who race here say they absolutely love North Wilkesboro. Well, the car's on the speedway now. They're warming up those tires. Satch Worley indicated that this is a very important time for these uh, cars and drivers. Get the tires heated up before we start racing. Now here's the starting lineup for today's Lowe's 150 modified race from North Wilkesboro on the pole. Qualifying at 123.538 miles an hour is Satch Worley in car 07. Outside of row number one will be John Bryant from Bassett, Virginia. He's in car number 45. In the second row will be Billy Middleton in car number 46. Outside of him, number 69, the car driven by Junior Miller. In row number three, car number four driven by Gary Myers and number 40, Frank Fleming. Going in row number four this afternoon on the inside will be Bobby Hutchins in car number 15 and Randy Morrison will be outside of row number four. He's driving car number 19 and lives in Lincolnton, North Carolina. In row number five will be car number one. That car originally signed to Doug Hebron, but will be driven in today's race by Philip Smith. And on the outside of row number five, car number 99, Johnny Johnson. Sixth row, Robert Jeffries in car number 75 and Billy Agee in number 33. The seventh row will find Thomas Needham on the inside, driving car number 26 and Roger Hill in car number 79. And these last four starters did not take a time in qualifying, but they've been added to the lineup. Number 53, Melvin Swisher, and number nine, Ralph Brinkley. And finally, in the ninth and final row will be Lanny Wilkins in car number seven and Al Hill in number 78. And the 78 car is not on the racetrack, so we could have only 17 starters in today's event. Bob, in 1985 and in 1986, we only had one fastest qualifier in the Modifieds here at North Wilkesboro. That black number 40 right there with the chartreuse, believe it or not, there's blue and also lavender on that car to give it some nice outline. Frank Fleming was the only man who was able to sit on the pole in 85 and 86. Well, he's starting in sixth position today. It's a brand new race car, but I'll tell you what, Dick, we watched this guy mature. He's my pick today. He's got a good shot at it, Larry. He really, really does. He's a good racer. He won three races last year. He's never won here. This may be his day. You can see, by the way, as the cars are lining up for the start, they're weaving and bobbing around. That's not because they're trying to look racy. Instead, they're trying to heat up the tires. When these tires are cold, boy, they are just like rocks. They do not grab the racetrack well at all. So that's what all the moving and darting is about. It's about over now. They're now starting to line up and getting ready for a start. Bobby Hutchins will drive car number 15. Here's, he's from nearby Winston-Salem, North Carolina. Bob, as many of these cars and drivers are, Bobby Hutchins is a guy who doesn't have nearly as much experience on this size of a track as the guys up front, but he says he likes it very well here at North Wilkes. All right, the indication is the pace car is about to pull off the track and we are about to go racing for 150 laps. Here comes the field off of turn number four, being led slowly by Satch Worley. Now the pace begins to pick up the green flag flies and we are underway. Two abreast racing through turns number one and two as Satch Worley has grabbed the lead with the number 46, Billy Wilson running second and John Bryant falling into third spot. Here they come off of turn four for the completion of lap one. A Middleton running in second spot now is having a good run. He really wants to do well here today, but he's got some problems. He's got car 45, Johnny Bryant looking on the low side of him at this point. 
Middleton had an absolutely awful year last year. He had crashes, mechanical defects. He really wants to win here today, but Bryant looks like oh. he wants to win too. Close. Bryant going low in turn number one, almost spinning, but saving the car. He still remains in third position. There's some great racing going on now. Bryant moving to the inside in turn number three, but once again, unable to take that second spot away from Billy Middleton. The other man in front there, the white car with the purple trim is Junior Miller. Now, we have not seen him run up front all that often here at North Wilkesboro, but he turned in a good qualifying run today. And by the way, Middleton right there in that red number 46 has qualified second and third the last two modified races here. Well, there's an indication that maybe the higher groove is the faster one as Bryant moved to the top side in turns three and four and took that second spot from the number 46 of Billy Middleton. Now we'll see if uh, Miller will try the same approach as he goes into turn number three. He elects instead to uh, just follow the 46 car. Bob, that groove in three and four, the high side is the same one that we saw Jan Leete use to go around Satch Worley to win the race in the spring last year. Remember, they're going uphill as they go into turn three. And you can hang it out just a little more and use the banking, the centrifugal force, just a little more up there. The battle for fourth place here is between the number 69 of Junior Miller and Frank uh, Fleming in car number 40 going for fourth here. Fleming really didn't get much of an opportunity to practice with that car. It is brand new, so he's still got some bugs to work out with the automobile. In fact, he had practiced a little bit faster than he actually qualified for the car. As a matter of fact, Dick, he was really fast in practice. I was watching him yesterday, and as you mentioned, it's a new car, and they didn't have very many consecutive laps. But I, and it looks like Fleming's going to get on the inside of Junior Miller oh. this time. Remember, Junior is in that faster lane. Can he hold on? Yes, Miller moves down on the inside of Fleming. Wanted to share with you that Fleming had one practice lap yesterday at 17.75 thereabouts off a handheld stopwatch. Now, that is 20 hundreds of a second under his existing one lap track record, and that's an average speed of over 126 miles an hour, but they just couldn't put it all together. He qualified a second slower than that 17.75 that he practiced at. The speeds weren't especially fast here today in qualifying, probably because of the cold weather. The pole sitter Satch Worley at 123 and a half, and that's uh, almost two miles an hour faster than Johnny Bryant, who qualified second. While we watch this action back in the pack and specifically the battle for fourth place between Miller and Fleming and we can also uh, tell you that Gary Myers is there in car number four when he will pick up his spot but the leader is Satch Worley and he has pulled out about a half a straightaway advantage on number uh, 45 Johnny Bryant who is running in second there's the leader Satch Worley will be right back with more from North Wilkesboro. Bob Jenkins, Larry Newber, Dick Bergeron, and Jerry Punch back at North Wilkesboro Speedway in North Carolina for modified racing. There's your leader, Satch Worley, who's already begun to lap some slower traffic. Here is the best race on the track, however. It's for fourth. It involves the number 69 car of Junior Miller and Frank Fleming at number 40. Fleming has been trying desperately for the last few laps to uh, move ahead of Miller, but just can't get the job done as now everybody is in slower traffic. And they're going around the outside of Putin Fisher down there, putting the lap on Putin. While this is going on, by the way, Worley continues to lead. Brian has moved in a little bit on him and running uh, in the third position course uh, is Middleton who qualified up in the first two rows. Now here's an interesting statistic the 10 lap Fleming average. finally got him. Fleming finally got him I think that time he pulled off a good turn three and four and he finally gets by Junior Miller. So Fleming now moves into fourth position. Trouble in turn two. Oh we have two cars spinning in turn number two one of them is the number one car Philip Smith also involved was the 19 car Randy Morrison. They uh, got up high on the racetrack may have oh. brushed the wall, but Brinkley. I don't think there was a serious contact. And now we have Ralph Brinkley with a mechanical problem, smoking badly coming into the pits. And it looks like his race may be over. We were just about to comment as the yellow flag comes out now that the first 10 lap average was 125 miles an hour. And Dick, that's a mile and a half hour, mile an hour and a half faster than the pole sitter. How do you explain that? Things are starting to warm up a little bit. It's as simple as that. When they qualified, the racetrack was colder, the tires were colder, but they're getting warmer now, and the race is heating up, too. 18 laps have been completed. The yellow flag is out because of Ralph Brinkley's blown engine and a spin up in turn number two. We'll resume with NASCAR Modified Racing right after these messages.
The first yellow of this 150 lap modified race is out here at North Wilkesboro. There was a spin up in turn number two involving Philip Smith and Randy Morrison, but I believe the yellow was because of the apparent blown engine on the Ralph Brinkley car. He's out of the race. Here's Dr. Jerry Punch. Well, 47 year old reigning Bowman Gray Stadium champion, Ralph, uh, it just has not been your day. No, so far it's been pretty rough. We uh, hit the wall, we didn't get to qualify. The car's running good and we started in the rear. I think we done picked up to the, I know we passed over half the cars in, in a short, what? We didn't run long in there. Can anyone stay with Satch Worley? Uh, is anyone strong enough to hang with him? Well, really, I never got close enough to see him, so I don't know how good he's running. But uh, I know he's usually ready when he gets down here. That's Ralph Brinkley out of it here at North Wilkes Club. Well, he did move up considerably in the first 18 laps of the race. He started 16th and was in ninth when the mechanical problem occurred. We're back to green, Worley and Johnny Bryant first and second, Frank Fleming is third. And we are going to see now, Dick and Bob, just the relative speeds here, the first three runners. These are the three guys who have visually appeared to be the quickest in the field. This you and I were talking in break. You thought Worley and I wasn't quite so sure. What do you think? I think Worley is really running extremely well this afternoon. He also knows how to pace himself, Larry. They've got mirrors in the car. He can keep an eye on what's going on behind him. Right now, Worley looks very strong to me. Well, he had about a half a straightaway advantage on Bryant before the yellow, and now Bryant is staying right up with it, right on the back bumper of that car as they go down the back stretch. And Frank Fleming in third position isn't all that far behind. He's about five car lengths behind Johnny Bryant. Let's see how things shake out here as they come off of turn number four and complete another lap. It's still Worley leading, but Bryant putting a lot of pressure on him. There's still a long ways to go. This is going to be a 150 lap race, and we figure to have a couple of more caution flags and one of the stop for fuel, but everybody probably will take the opportunity to come in one time morning. You see that Fleming looks like he's the fastest car out there, but the disadvantage that he's going to be at is that the crews of Worley in 07, the leader, and Bryant in car number 45 running in second, they know how to make those adjustments mid-race to make the cars go even faster. Yeah, and it's also a new team with the 40 car, Larry. Uh, Fleming's crew has not been together particularly long. They're just getting started on it. 46, 4, and 69 going at it here for that fourth position. The number 69 of Junior Miller on the high side of Billy Middleton. And right behind all of this is Gary Myers from Walnut Cove, North Carolina. Junior Miller is a very aggressive driver. He's a roofing contractor who has been up, run a little bit of Winston Cup racing. He likes the modifieds. He prefers this. He spent most of his recent years of his career in the modified racing. And his aggression was noted on short tracks throughout most of his career, but he's having a good day here today. Actually, there, there are five cars battling for position here, also in this, and Johnny Johnson in car number 99. And not too far behind, moving up is Bobby Hutchins in car number 15, an orange and black car. Johnson, it appears, is going to go to the high side oh. as they all uh, go around some slower traffic. But that blue and white car of Johnson is looking like he was going to try the spot on the high side of the racetrack. Now we see Myers and Middleton going for it for fourth place down the back stretch. There are two and a half lanes going into three where they are right now, but there aren't three. Johnson found that out the last time. Middleton once again having a slide. He started at the top three in each of the last two races, but just hasn't been able to hold on to it. If you like Fords, Middleton is the guy to cheer for it. That's a Ford EXP body, although under the hood of every race car out here today is a Chevrolet small block engine. Oh, Middleton slipping back now. He's definitely having some problems trying to just Hang on, he's going to the back of the field. That's Johnson and Middleton as Johnson passes Middleton and goes into sixth spot. The leaders, meanwhile, continue to be Worley, Bryant, and Fleming. Still running one, two, three, and very close on the racetrack as we have completed 32 of the 150 circuits. I tell you what, Dick, given Fleming's position and station in life right now and the amount of experience that he has had up to this point, He's in the absolute best position he could be in here in the first 100 laps of this race. Following these veterans around, he's not being pressured by them. He's not torturing the car in any way. He looks like he has the fastest of the three cars, and he's in a really good spot. And the nice thing about the position he's in right now, Larry, is that he's got absolutely no one behind him in his rearview mirror. Yeah. The only thing Oh, we have a problem in turn number Boy, one. Car is spinning, and I think there are going to be more cars involved, perhaps not a big 
puff of uh, steam coming from that car. It's the number 33 machine driven by Billy Agee from Martinsville, Virginia. Something let go on that car at the end of the straightaway, and the visibility was practically nil of the drivers behind him as they went into turn number one, but I think everybody kept it away from the wall. And there is Agee sitting at the top of the racetrack, and the yellow out on lap number 35. You know, it's so cold here today as the cars went through the hot water that was left on the track from AG's incident. Steam came off the tires as the cars went through it, Dick. Yeah, there he goes. He's just lost it. It appears as if that engine has blown wide open and there's a lot of liquid on the racetrack right now. Look at the steam coming off the tires. And that's just because the water that's on the track is being picked up by the tires. The water is very hot and as it reaches the cold air, it's condensating. It's that cool out here in the mountains here today. Yeah, he almost got the wall, but he did a good job keeping that thing off the wall. Watch this, almost in, not quite. Boy, he was fortunate. <laughs> well, he was fortunate in a way. He wasn't totally fortunate because the engines in these cars are all worth ten to $20,000, and they come right out of the pocket, generally, of the driver of the car. And there were a couple of drivers behind Billy that had to stand on the brakes to avoid hitting him. The cleanup is underway now here at North Wilkesboro. We'll be right back. The leader, Satch Worley, has come in for a pit stop. Looks like they're checking the tire on the right side, uh, right front of the car. We are under yellow, and uh, obviously fuel being needed for that car also. Satch well, Worley pulling away now and rejoining the field. And uh, Billy Middleton in car number 46 has also come in. We had noticed him uh, dropping back some blood. He's back to sixth position now. Perhaps we can get a reason for that from uh, Jerry Punch. Cecil Duggan's the crew chief for Billy Middleton, and Cecil, Billy was dropping back just a little bit. Is there a problem with the car, or did you make a change that maybe went the wrong way for you? Well, we changed gears uh, this morning. We went with a little higher gear, and it might have it might have hurt us coming off the corner just a little bit, but he's been sick all week with the flu, and that's what's wrong with him right now. He's sick. He's well, real sick right now. Billy Middleton with a sick race car and sick himself, so having a tough time here at North Wilkesboro. Well, the cleanup crews have completed their work down in the first turn, so we should be going green momentarily here. Gary Myers in car number four, the Miller American Cavalier, is on pit road for some work on that car, and they also are working on the right front of that machine. While we are still under yellow, we'll take this break and be right back with more. Next time around, we'll be coming off the yellow period here and going green. We are yellow because of a blown engine on Billy Agee's car, number 33. Let's go down to this report for from the pit area and Jerry Punch. This is veteran car builder and crew chief Speedy Thomas for Satch Whirling. And Speedy, you brought Satch in on, on this caution for a pit stop, a tire change and fuel. Did you have to stop? Well, I had a right front tire going bad, and I decided it better change at the end road try to run it on a few more laps and if I gas up I won't have to stop I can run the rest of the way on fuel they calculated before the race started they could go about 120 laps on fuel so it's a good break for them to get fuel under caution the green comes out in a drag race to turn number one won by Frank Fleming he goes into the lead Johnny Bryan is second Junior Miller running in third position Frank really got a nice restart coming off of corner number four. Dick, I'll tell you why I did not like that move. There's a lot of quick dry down on number one. I don't know that he knew exactly what he was facing, but he handled it perfectly. Well, he'd never exactly know what you're facing in automobile racing anyway. And, and Fleming really did a great job there. You've got to go through the gears here to get that thing out of the corner and come down for the green flag. Excellent job and, and a good demonstration of courage by, by both <laughs> Fleming and the 45 Johnny Bryant. I agree with uh, that. Both of them stuck their leg right in it and they went right into that mess in the first third. Here's a, what a nice pass. There's Fleming going to the inside. He did not jump out of line. The green flag flickered as the pack was in turn number four and he was just ready to go as soon as he saw it and off he went. As Jerry mentioned to you, Satch Worley, who led the uh, early stages of this race, did come in for a pit stop, and he is now threading his way through traffic as we continue to follow the first three, especially the race for the lead involving Frank Fleming and the number 45 car of John Bryant. And Satch Worley is catching up. He's about a straightaway behind the leader. The average speed at the end of 30 laps before the most recent caution period had dropped to 98.540 miles an hour. Now 
Bryant Ooh. looks like gave Fleming a tap there in the rear end in turn number four. They come down the straightaway and complete another lap, but Fleming is holding on. Here is Satch Worley passing 99, Johnny Johnson, and now there are no cars between Satch Worley and the third place car driven by Junior Miller, and Satch is really moving. One third of the race has already gone by now. Remember again, this is a 150 lap race. It's interesting how the ebb and flow of this competition goes. We're watching Worley right now, and he easily appears to be the fastest car on the track. A little earlier, when Fleming, when he was running in third, there is Frank in that black chartreuse number 40. When he was running third, he looked like he was the quickest car. Now that he has passed Johnny Bryant, Bryant looks quicker than Frank, so it keeps going back and forth, but it keeps coming down also to three cars. Fleming in 40 on your screen right now. Johnny Bryan in 57 also on the screen and coming up to be heard from Satch Worley. The number 69 car of Junior Miller is running in third position, but he has dropped back now, leaving these uh, two to battle for the lead. There is the recap as far as yellow caution periods are concerned. Lone engine on the number 18 car of and the uh, car of uh, Billy Agee also blowing a motor. And there you see Brinkley, Agee, and Roger Hill have all dropped out of the race. Now, Dick, another important part of this race begins to come up now, and I'm going to say that it's very important that Fleming we have a spin. spin. Hutchins. It's oh, and Fleming's into the wall. Frank Fleming has hit the wall in the front stretch, and Frank Fleming's day is over. Well, uh, unfortunate situation. He was just about to cross the line to take the yellow flag because of the spin by Bobby Hutchins over in turn number two, and Fleming himself has contact with the wall. Our leader has uh, met an unfortunate situation. The number one car of Philip Smith, we understand, is leaking oil and may have caused both incidents. Oh, I was just about to say that it would have been important that they put as many people one lap down before they stopped. Now, here is the number one car, Philip Smith, who was on the racetrack about the same location of the spin there of Hutchins. You can see Hutchins coming around, no contact with anybody else or any of the outside barriers. And then the crash involving Frank Fleming, the leader, as he and Johnny Bryant came off the fourth corner, about to take the yellow flag. And Fleming just getting a little bit loose and nailing the wall. Hmm. There's a matter of uh, being the lead duo, lead, being the lead car in the lead duo is not the place to be. The yellow came out on lap 55, and our spotters around the track are saying that it was oil or water deposited by the yellow number one of Philip Smith a lap or two earlier that put Fleming into the wall. The misfortune that Frank Fleming has experienced here at North Wilkesboro continues. He's out of the race. We are under our third caution period of the afternoon as we bring you the Lowe's 150 NASCAR modified race from North Wilkesboro, North Carolina Speedway. We are under the most current caution period because of incidents involving Bobby Hutchins over in uh, turn number two and the leader, Frank Fleming, who nailed the wall here on the main straightaway. Let's go to Jerry Punch with an interview with Frank Fleming. Well, Frank, trouble again today. Three poles here at North Wilkesboro, and son of a gun, you've been close but no cigar, and problems again. What happened today? Well, somebody had dropped some oil out of the car. They sprung some kind of a leak, blow the motor, done something, and I seen it down in turn one and two, and I went wide, and it was all the way up the back straight. I was wanting them to throw the caution out, but you know, there's no way to get in touch with them, and then up here coming off four, it looks like to me the car had moved up the track and come into line that I was trying to really, you know, devoid a spin. And it's just one of them things that got me today. You made a pretty gallant move on the restart a few laps back to take the lead. That's something you saw used on you last year. Yes, yeah, about five months ago, I was leading the race and Jan Lady done it to me, took the lead for me, and I decided I'd try to do it myself. And it's hard to see you out of it. Green flag is out, we're back to racing. Six cars are on the lead lap. 10 cars are still in competition out of 17 that began this race. Satch Worley came in for a couple of more pit stops during that caution period. This time to change tires on the left side of the car. So Satch is on the lead lap, but he is gonna have to move up through traffic to be a competitor for the lead. The lead is held by John Bryant in car number 45, and Junior Miller is right there in second. This is a Brian Worley race, unless Junior Miller can find some way to mount a challenge. Now, as we go back to green here, Junior Miller is hanging in there. He's holding his own against the veteran Brian. He is hitting 
He's running really, really well today, too, Larry. I remember last fall when we came to this racetrack, Junior Miller was all pumped up about his ability to win here, and he thinks he can today. That's Gary Myers and Satch Worley. Worley to the inside of oh. Myers, and some real close competition here. They're going for that fifth spot. Right ahead of them is the fourth place car, driven by Billy Middleton, and Satch has uh, moved alongside. Let's see how things go coming out of the corner. Worley moves into fourth position now and is really going toward the front. Myers makes a great move. Hutchins, you saw, saw him wiggling coming out of turn two. He's still searching for it. It's just not coming together for him, but the mount doesn't feel steadily, steady underneath, and both Meyer and Worley find some room on the outside and move by. Great opportunity for Meyer. He picked up a position and all that, maybe two. Lead continues to be held by Johnny Bryant from Bassett, Virginia. Driving a Cavalier, there you see the interval between first and second position. As Junior Miller has been running in the top five just about all afternoon, however, it seems like that uh, as the course of the race goes along, he begins to fall back just a little, and that's the situation now, as he was right up on the back bumper of Bryant a few laps ago, but now beginning to drop back just a little. And we have not mentioned the guy who, and we've got a smoker in turn three, it's Miller, lots of smoke. Difficult to say exactly what it is. It ain't tire smoke, I'll tell you that. Well, he continues on the racetrack. The yellow does come out, however, and Junior Miller, who was in second position, may be through for the afternoon. See, Junior has cut the power way back, probably checking the mirrors. He might not have known exactly who it was. You're busy going into particularly number three down here. So Miller will be ducking down, trying to uh, steer to the pits this time around and see if he can uh, determine whether or not their problem is terminal or just a temporary one. What do you think, Dick? Well, it's hard to say what's wrong with, with Miller's car. Most of the smoke was coming from the back of the automobile. Look at this, half the crew is gonna take the hood up. Yeah, th th it appears to be an engine problem underneath the hood. Not a lot of smoke inside the cockpit when that happens, so he may not have known for sure what was going on again, but it does look like an engine problem. You know, here it is again in replay. The leader, Bryant, on the left side of your screen. There is Miller's engine letting go, apparently. And as you say, it, it doesn't look like they do exactly, or traditionally, when it's just simply an engine problem, but uh, that's certainly where they're doing their work. So the caution flag comes out for the fourth time this afternoon. We'll be back with more of the Lowe's 150. Back at North Wilkesboro for the NASCAR modified Lowe's 150 on the day before the Winston Cup cars will compete here at North Wilkesboro. Race will have live for you at one o'clock on Sunday afternoon. Our fourth yellow period of the afternoon is about to end. Let's go down to Jerry Punch. Well, the reason for this caution flag is Junior Miller. Junior, what happened? Uh, we broke a fitting off the oil pan. Uh, land just fell off and it's blown all out on the racetrack. Just knocked us out of the race. It was saving the car for the end of the race there. We started running a little better there at about half point, or halfway there when it bro broke and just didn't make it to the way. We're trying to run good. Well, that's Junior Miller. We're going back to green. Indeed we are. The green comes out. We are one lap past the halfway point. And Brian is the leader, running in second position, Johnny Johnson. And in third, look at Satch Worley in car number 07, who has made a few pit stops this afternoon and fallen to the rear of the pack. But each time, he has worked his way back to the front. Dick, I'm a little surprised that uh, Bryant has not taken the opportunity to pit yet as Worley looks, looks over Johnson looking for a way to get around. I gotta believe that because Worley has uh, had an opportunity to make some adjustments on the tires, make sure there's absolutely no question on the fuel, have a couple of brief conversations with his crew chief. He's in really good position right here and Bryant has not come in yet. He may not come in at all, Larry. It's perfectly possible for one of these automobiles to go 150 laps. Boy, we've got a good fight for the lead right now, and the 07 Worley has just blasted by Johnson into the second position. Uh, Worley has been in at least two times. He's changed both front tires on his car. Your leader, however, has not. 45, Johnny Bryant has not been in the pit since the race line. Now Sachs Worley at number 07 closes into about five car lengths. Here they come off of corner number four, and Sachs, without doubt, has the fastest car on the race track. Johnny Bryant, I'm sure, is very much aware of that as he's checking things in the rearview mirror. 
Both of these guys are in 10th position, tied for 10th position in career wins at the Bowman Gray Stadium. That's the racetrack where these drivers run on a weekly basis. They both won about 25 times in their long and storied careers. They've done a lot of, uh, spent a lot of time barnstorming up and down the East Coast, so they don't have quite as many wins as somebody like Radford or Ralph Brinkley who dropped out of this race early on. There's Johnson and Gary Myers, another second generation racer, as uh, they're having a conversation over third place. Johnson in third, Gary Myers in fourth, and in fifth position is Middleton in car number 46, not too far behind Gary Myers. We've had three leaders of this race. Right now, John Bryant is the leader, but Satch Worley has led the most laps, and Worley now is right on the back bumper of Bryant, and Worley may be going for the lead at any moment. Let's check the uh, mid-race recap. You can see at the halfway point, Johnny Bryant was the leader, and we were under caution at that time. The average speed had dropped to just under 70 miles an hour. Three leaders and three lead changes. We have had four caution periods, but uh, mostly for mechanical problems. Frank Fleming did spin here on the main straightaway to eliminate himself, and also Bobby Hutchins spun over in turn number two. And there you see the cars that have dropped out of competition. The three leaders have been Worley, Fleming, and Ryan. Right now on the racetrack, Satch Worley continues to run in second position, stalking Johnny Bryan. A couple of years ago, by the way, Johnny Bryant won a race at Martin Speedway all the way on one tank full of fuel. Also, the only guy on the speedway that day that did it. That, however, was for a different car owner than the man he's driving for today. Uh, today, he's driving for Ken Stewart, who, by the way, owns five race cars. Five of them. Two of them are antiques, and three of them are modern automobiles. Ten race cars for years and years. Meanwhile, down on Pitt Road, Jerry Punch has a report. When we're talking about the fuel situation, a lot of these drivers think they cannot go all the way on a single tank of fuel. 150 laps here at Brooksboro is about 92 miles on a 5-8 mile racetrack. Most of the drivers think they can go maybe 70 to 70 miles or 120 laps. Now you mentioned Johnny Bryant. He won the race at Martinsville a couple of years ago by being able to stretch the fuel. His crew chief and brother, Donald Bryant, tells me it's going to be awfully close on whether they can make it the distance here at Brooksboro. Well, that's something that Satch Worley doesn't have to worry about because he has refueled that car in his visits to Pitt Road, but John Bryant has not been in for a stop, so he may be in a fuel problem. Back with more from North Wilkesboro, North Carolina, and the Lowe's 150 after this. We welcome you back to NASCAR Modified Racing. I'm Bob Jenkins, along with Larry Newber and Dick Berggren in the pits and Jerry Punch in the food, rather, and Jerry Punch in the pit area. The battle we're watching right now involves the 99 blue car of Johnny Johnson, the number four machine of Gary Myers, and Billy Middleton in 46. And it's a pretty good one, too. Remember, this is for third position. Myers goes to the inside of Johnson. Remember that lane down there in three and four. It should be the high lane if it works the best. Johnson survives that up front. Now Billy Middleton, number 46. Oh, oh, and Myers takes back that uh, third position. At the end of the back stretch, there you can see the average speed overall is 69.90 miles an hour, but the green flag average is 122.88. And a few laps ago, we clocked the leader at 123.152. The leader remaining, Johnny Bryan. Meyer really, Myers really made a great move that time coming out of number two, Dick. They opened the door just a little bit. They all moved over to make a pass on a lap car, and it was too much for him, and Myers jumped in. Yeah, he sure did. Right now, though, I'm watching Satch Worley, who's dropping back on the leader, Johnny Bryant. So I'm sure Worley is aware of the situation with Bryant with the fuel, and he's just got plenty of time to go beat on his door, and he's obviously got plenty of horsepower, too. There is uh, Myers. Gary Myers moving in there. He just went to the outside of Put and Fisher as they came out of number two. They, he was trying to pass Johnny Johnson there in a blue and white car. There's oh. some <laughs> tire oh. banging going on. <laughs> but they both stayed on it because they were together as they went down to the other end of the speedway, came out of number two. There's the interval between first and second. The cars high on the racetrack are on the lead lap. That's Johnny Bryan, number 45, and Satch Worley in 07. 
Well, you mentioned, Dick, that you thought that Satch was just uh, hanging back here, hoping that Johnny Bryant does have a fuel problem. What do you think, Larry? Well, we got a, about 50 laps to go yet in this event. We're up to uh, 99, yeah, 51 laps to be exactly. There is uh, Gary Myers again and 46 of Billy Meyer. I have a tendency to agree with Dick. I think that Morley understands that he does not have to take any unnecessary chances right now. And as long as he can keep pace with Bryant, he can follow him around for another 15 or 20 laps. Because this is only a 5 8 mile track, he's got to start to make his move if he is capable of doing it by no later than lap 120. This is the battle for third place. And Aaron Bryant Myers. is spinning. Bryant spins in turn number four. He gathers it back up. Does he have enough momentum to hold off Worley? Oh. Worley goes to the inside. They go around Lonnie Wilkins. And Satch Worley gets a gift from Johnny Bryant. It appeared just to be an error. Bryant, I don't think, spun the car, but sure got it out of shape enough that Worley could uh, pass him for the lead. Well, here's where we find out who's really tough or not, because Bryant right now needs to redeem himself from that problem in the fourth corner. And if he's really got the moxie to be out in front, this is the time to go by the 07 of Satch Worley. It looks like he's going to try to make a move yeah. right now. And on the other hand, if Worley was holding back or waiting, he would no longer do it now that he has the lead. He'd take off running high if he could, right, Dick? That's right. He's just gone, Larry. If he can, this is the time to leave. So we still have had only three leaders, but that is our fourth lead change of the afternoon, and this is how it occurred. Bryant was uh, just moving through lap traffic, coming around three or four, no incident. You can see it, it just got away. Johnny goes into a long slide. Right now he has to get on the brakes to keep the thing from stopping, and it's very difficult to labor back up to the RPMs. Meanwhile, Wally is coming along there without any incident, and Middleton has gotten around Myers, and Middleton takes over third. Middleton in third now, and Myers back to fourth position as first and second now held by Worley and John Bryant. Here is a replay of how Middleton took over that third spot. There's Middleton down on the inside. They're going through three and four, and Myers just got out of the lane. We've commented a couple times you can do very well miles per hour, RPMs wide on the high side of three and four, but if you've lost the momentum and you give up the inside lane too early, you can't defend. I'll take my hat off to Middleton. Boy, it's a tough, tough deal to drive one. Oh, oh, Brian. Boy, Brian in big trouble. Big trouble for Brian. You know, it, it may be a tire situation. It's difficult to say, but he has made no changes. We've commented a couple of times. Dick? Well, he just raised his hand when he went down the straightaway as if to warn the drivers behind him that he has really got a problem. Johnny Bryant definitely in trouble here. Here's a replay, and for the second time in just a few laps, it is Bryant in trouble in turn four. You see, he looked down low. It looked like he had picked up on Worley as they moved through three and four, and he was looking for an opening, but as he pointed the car down low, it got away. And Jerry, you got to comment on this. Well, we've seen Johnny Bryant do the bob and weave here in turn four. His crew seems to think maybe the soft tire compound that they guessed with today may be giving up on him. Some of the other people have come in like Satch Worley and changed tires. We've documented that, but Bryant has not made a pit stop for tires or fuel. His crew says the tires have maybe gone, and he's having trouble handling the car. About a half a straightaway advantage now for Satch Worley over Johnny Bryant, and we are on lap number... 100, 150. We'll be back right after this. With 113 of 150 laps completed, here are the top five. The leader is Satch Worley. Second position, Johnny Bryant. Billy Middleton is in third, and Gary Myers fourth. A lap down in fifth position is the number 99 car driven by Johnny Johnson. Sixth unofficially is Bobby Hutchins. Then in seventh position is Robert uh, Jeffries. In eighth is Melvin Swisher. Ninth is Lanny Wilkins. In tenth position is the 19 car driven by Randy Morrison. There's Johnny Bryant now in second position. However, it doesn't seem that Satch Worley is moving away from Bryant at all. As a matter of fact, you know what happens when you put a linebacker on Mark Clayton? It's really obvious that Clayton is faster. That's what's going on right now. Bryant is moving in again. Number 75 car, Robert Jeffries, is into the pit area. Our spotters had 
thought that perhaps he was dropping a liquid onto the racetrack, so he is in. Also, number 26, Thomas Needham, will uh, go out of the pit area now as we continue to watch the work on the Jeffries machine. Some really interesting moments coming up for Johnny Bryant. He can now tell, hey, I am significantly faster than Satch, but hopefully he's gone to school the last couple times he's gotten close. He's tried to stand on the pedal and make a move to get around Satch, and he has created some errors, not because he is a poor racer, but because the car is not at full speed when he gets close. Well, he's also figured out where the absolute edge is. You can believe that he's running to that car to the total limit of adhesion because he's lost it at least three times that we have seen this afternoon. Satch, on the other hand, may still have some left. We have yet to see Satch bob or weave or make any miscue of any kind. He is totally in control of the 07 car as currently your leader. I'll tell you, if Bryant is able to make a significant challenge or he eventually gets by, what a performance is going to be. Looking for the third place car, driven by the number 46. There he is, Billy Middleton. He's running in third. Right behind him is the fourth place car, driven by Gary Myers. There is an indication for you of exactly how far these uh, runners in third and fourth are behind Satch Worley and Johnny Bryan. Those four cars, the only ones on the lead lap. The car being shown in fifth position is the 99 machine, driven by Johnny Johnson. He's a lap down. And Gary Meyer there in the number four, Gary Myers is the son of Billy Myers. Those of you who happen to live up in the Northeast, remember Smokey Snellbaker? That's who Gary Kerr reminds me of. Snow White, you know, Dick? Oh. Good compliment. Look at this battle for the lead is now Johnny Bryant has moved right up on Satch Worley. Look to the inside there in turn number two. Going down the back stretch, it's still Satch Worley in the lead, but Bryant looks like he may be looking for that top spot. Oh, he is right on the edge. He's got to be very careful. We have seen that those tires are not getting the same grip that they were at the beginning of the race, and certainly not the grip that Bryant is accustomed to having. He has got to be absolutely pinpoint perfect to get around Satch. They don't make any mistakes either because they're going to get side by side. Oh, here we go. Here we go. Ryan to the inside. Worley on the outside of the track, but Satch holds him off once again. Unless he makes a mistake, I've got to believe that Brian has got to make a good move going into three, right where he's going now, and try that high side of Worley. Unless Satch is beginning to lose a bit of his tire grip, starts running uh, maybe a lane up as he goes to the board. Like last year, when Lady was working on Worley, I got a feeling we've got the same situation here. Brian has got to look high in three and four. We have 25 laps to go in this race. It's a great battle up front. Satch Worley and Johnny Bryan. Worley learned from that experience last fall. Look where he's running, Dick, up there. He goes in three and four. He's about a half a lane, three quarters of a lane off the inside rail. Yeah, he's definitely not going to let Bryant get on the outside of him. No question about that. And for Bryant, with his problem, what happens to him when he loses control of the car is the back end brakes loose. Now, if he were on the outside with the back end brakes loose, he might be able to get away with it. But if he's on the inside, he won't. He'll take the 07 with him. Here's a replay of some action just a few laps ago. We saw some smoke coming from the rear end of Satch Worley's car. Is that tire smoke or did it come from the exhaust, Dick? I would guess that it's probably the point at which he's picking up the throttle, Bob, and, and so therefore it would most likely be engine smoke. It appeared to come out both sides. It, however, is probably nothing to be particularly concerned about. That is not an indication that an engine is about to expire. We continue to watch this battle for the lead. Now, the cars are approaching Gary Myers, who is running fourth. If put him a lap down, that would leave only three machines on the lead lap. There goes Satch Worley to the outside of Myers in turn number two, but he can't make the pass at the moment. And by lapping the third and fourth running cars, this could be Bryant's best chance coming up. Now you can see just up ahead of him, you saw a quick glimpse of Bobby Hutchins. He's running competitively. Middleton is right up there because Bryant, oh, and Bryant gets forced way to the high side as he tries to go around Gary Myers. That was really a big moment in this race because we're getting down to the final stage and Bryant does not have an opportunity or does not, cannot take a chance to lose any time at all. And you saw a car running slow there on the inside of the back stretch. That was Johnny Johnson who was shown in sixth spot. Back with more after this from North Wilkesboro. Less than 20 laps to go in the Lowe's 150 NASCAR Modified Race from North Wilkesboro. There are the top five. Worley, the leader, Johnny Bryant second. Middleton is third, Myers fourth, and Bobby Hutchins has now moved into fifth position. Johnny Johnson was in fifth, however, he has dropped back, and Hutchins now in that fifth spot. 
And here's the battle for the lead once again. Bryant right behind. Satch Worley looks to the inside, going into one. Can't make the pass. This is good stuff. You saw that little puff of smoke again as Satch Worley went into the corner. That almost certainly is engine smoke. It does appear to be coming off the exhaust header. And, and look at Worley. Worley constantly trying the inside. Oh, boy. Bryant trying the outside. And again, what's going on is Worley just won't give him the outside lane. Bryant would really like to try that. Now, what Satch has to be careful of is to not overdo it. If he moves up too high and Bryant is Johnny on the spot, Johnny Bryant on the spot, Johnny can dip down low get him on the low side while Satch is defending up high. While we watch this battle for the lead, we'll remind you that we'll be on live at 1 o'clock on Sunday afternoon with the first Union 400 oh, oh. Uh, Winston Cup race for NASCAR uh, stock cars. And that is the race that also should see competition just like we've seen here this afternoon in the Modifieds. Ryan, once again, dives low on the main straightaway. As they go into one, though, it's Satch Worley with the higher and faster groove maintaining that top spot. Worley had any doubt as to where Johnny Bryant was. He, was to go. he let him know. He said, tap, tap on the back bumper, and there it was. He said, here I am. You better be careful. You say, well, I can feel when somebody's back there. They'll tell you that, well, I can hear him when he's back there. Well, Worley got an absolute knock on the door saying, hey, I'm here right here, just in case you want to come back. When they cross the stripe this time, it'll be lap number 139 complete. We'll have 11 laps to go on this racetrack that's just over a half mile in length. The average speed is 83.90 overall. Discounting the caution periods, the green flag average is 129.29. Worley has gone high in four, and Bryant's got a little more of a wheel than he had in previous laps, but Satch, Satch stands on it, coming down the front straightaway and holds him back, but that was close that time. Satch has only 10 more laps to go. Can he hold off Bryant for the win? We'll learn after this. The situation is this here at North Wilkesboro Speedway in our NASCAR modified race. Satch Worley in the red and white number 07 is the leader, but the blue car number 45 of Johnny Bryant is right on the rear end of that race car and trying to take over the lead. Last fall here, it was Jan Lady from upstate in the eastern, uh, northeastern part of the country that was following Worley, and Lady definitely had the fastest of the two cars, but there was a difference between that situation and this situation. Lady's car was also performing up to maximum. Brian's car, we suspect that the tire situation is not the optimal one for him. Johnny, as a matter of fact, the shot has dropped back. Johnny Bryan is not going to get around Worley unless Satch makes an error. Yeah, he is definitely pulling off the race car. He dropped well back now. He's a good 10 or 12 cars back. Either one of the tires has gone away or he's received a symptom of running out of fuel. But Bryant now dropping solidly off the pace. Worley solidly in the lead at this moment. Five laps to go. Five laps to go. There's the interval between first and second. Sack Worley appears to have things wrapped up. But there are still a little more than four laps to go, and anything can happen. Satch Worley started winning here at North Wilkesboro in the late 1970s. There is Johnny Bryant, who has been watching very carefully the last 30 or 40 green flag laps. Remember that Johnny Bryant has not been in person since this race began, so it's been a, not a long, lonely afternoon, but a lonely afternoon for Johnny. Worley won here in 80, 81, 82, 83. He won both of the races. He won here in 1985. It's actually slowed down a little bit here in the middle years of the decade, but Worley, without a doubt, is the successful veteran of modified racing at North Wilkesboro. Billy Middleton is your third place driver, and Gary Bryant is in fourth at the moment, as now there will be three laps to go next time around. I wonder what Bryant must be thinking now that he comes so close and at the very tail end to lose out and be slowing as he is. Come so close about three or four times, Dick. He had the lead, then he got passed by Satch, then he came back up. White flag comes up, they can find one more lap to go. He's came, come back up twice. He had this race within his grasp about three different times. It looks like it's going to be smooth sailing and a win for Satch Worley here in the Lowe's 150. Here he is off the fourth corner. He takes the checkered flag and Satch Worley wins. Johnny Bryant finishes in second position as Satch's pit crew celebrates the win.
finishing in third spot is going to be Middleton and Gary Myers in fourth and a lap down finishing in fifth position unofficially will be Bobby Hutchins and uh, he ran a good race considering that he spun over in turn number two on lap number 55 and make no mistake about it this is a major event for modified racing there is second place Johnny Bryant rolling in he'll have a great deal to say to his pit crew and they're going to ask him what went on what went wrong he'll attempt to explain it to them I was commenting about this racetrack this is the Talladega this is the Darlington this is a major event a major racetrack for modified racing so Satch moves into victory lane our Dr. Jerry Punch is already there and he'll have an interview with the winner when we come back On a very cold Saturday afternoon in North Carolina, Satch Worley wins the Lowe's 150 modified race. Here's Jerry Punch. Satch, congratulations on win number eight. Heck of a run today. Yeah, it, we turned out pretty lucky. We uh, we weren't right there to start with. We had a uh, we had some bad tires on the front, so we uh, had to make two pit stops to get those fixed, and then uh, uh, we caught back up pretty easy. But uh, Johnny was running good, and we. Uh, we were a little bit loose, and we, you know, we just lucked up and got by him right there. And then I, and once I got in front, I just drove my own race. What do you think may have happened to Johnny? Could it have been the tires may have been going away on his cars? He started getting a little bit slippery out there. Yeah, it looked kind of like it. He uh, looked like he had his problem whenever he had to go around lap traffic. And uh, usually, when when they lose time in lap traffic, that's because it's the car's real loose and they can't get around the outside of the racetrack. Well, Satch Worley winning here at the Wilkesboro. Interesting point. This car is a Billy Nassowitz chassis built. Of course, Billy Nassowitz built the cars for legendary Richie Evans. And Satch, congratulations again on a win. Yeah, I'd like to thank Bruce Hayes and Hayes Jewelers because, uh, you know, without him for the last four years, we wouldn't even be here. And uh, we've got a super race car, and it's the uh, RE chassis. And Speed and M's done a great job on the, on, on the motors and, and uh, putting the car together. And... Uh, we, we just got it going this year. The, this car is just a, a lot better than what we've had before, and, and I, I look for real good things from it. Satch Worley takes the win. Let's go back upstairs. All right, thank you, Jerry. The top five finishers, Worley the winner, Johnny Bryant finishes second, Billy Middleton third, Gary Myers was fourth, and Bobby Hutchins winds up in fifth position.